make one uh, thing, and, I, uh, and we want to make it over and over and over again, but it's this, that when you begin to build a, a course, first of all, you're interested in building the course. You're not interested in the problem of the lecture, the problem of the seminars, the conversation, your spirit problem, or anything else, so to speak. You're interested in getting that course built. And RS1, first of all, is a course, period. Uh, and I, I appreciate what some of you were saying of pushing back against this. Uh, the rational structure, the rational structure, the rational structure, the context, the context, and, what, uh, and, and other things pertaining to this. But first of all, that rational structure uh, is what is uh, uh, constructed for the course. And, and some of you have come away from the course falling flat on your face, you know, and, and the course sort of came off. And you wondered, well, maybe I really did pretty well after all. You know? <laughs> Well, in the midst of all the ups and downs of your emotions, probably what brought you off was the structure of that core, period. It carries you. Uh, and the, uh, if you want to put it this way, the structure is what you're after getting into their gut. You're not after getting this or that or this or that, first of all. You're not after getting God or the Son or the, son or the Spirit. You're after that whole thing in the midst of their being. Put it this way. The shell of that in the midst of their lives. Therefore, the rational structure is, first of all, the most important thing that you're after. Now, you began utterly, if you want to put it this way, as a rational man grounded in the irrationality of having made a decision where you put your foot down on this word in history instead of some other word. You always know that you start there. But once you start there, then you construct that course. And this course, as you'll see as you go through here, many places the structure appears throughout this, uh, you'll see again and again, it's just bang, 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 laid before you. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what's there. Uh, and then in the midst of that, you uh, figure out the goal that you're going to have. And I wish we had time, just maybe to brainstorm, for example. First of all, what are the external goals that you want to bring off in this? Uh, and you can begin to list them. In other words, what objectively do you want to have happen as this course is being put on? And of course, there are many major things and then many minor things, like one of the objective minor things that, uh, that you have after is the fact that they learn how to study, for example. Or this, uh, the study methodology somehow gets into their crawl. Then secondly, what internal, if you want to put it this, goals are you after? In other words, where are you, do you want uh, to push them in the midst of their own lives to arrive at making a decision of faith? Or what do you want to have happen to the internal life of that person? And uh, so there, here is just uh, what's uh, set in the midst of our being. The rational structure, the rational structure, and then within that model, uh, uh, what you want to actuate or what you want to come off uh, 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 with the model uh, being put into being. <laughs> now behind this, of course, is your old posture of life. Uh, and you either teach Jesus Christ or you're uh, standing on some reductionism or limited stance. Uh, and probably this, uh, to put it uh, uh, in the traditional language, is behind every problem you and I have ever had uh, in being teachers or in getting the course across. Uh, and uh, once uh, 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 we see our foot down in this with clarity and work out of that with clarity, then all things else are added on to it, so to speak. And so you either teach Jesus Christ or sloth, to put it in traditional language. Uh, you either uh, get the rational structure of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as it's uh, put into history by the church in the midst of their gizzards, or you get nothing in there. Uh, to put it in another way. So this is finally what we're after. I will not take time to go through each one of these because as you can see, they deal with the various things that are concerned. But, uh, uh, and what it's like for this manual to be thought of is temporary, is having to be revised and gone through, and this will be part of our purpose as we rattle to uh, see that uh, things are worked through. But the purpose and procedure, the syllabus, the structure of the course, the lecture, uh, the study, uh, uh, the seminars uh, and the study, we, uh, there were two things left off of there. Uh, we have uh, methodology and study assignment uh, 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 as A and B under uh, study. So you can write that in there if you like. Uh, where, where is that? Where that On table of contents, item number five, uh, indicated by study. Uh, a would be uh, methodology and B, study assignment. Seminars, you can notice there, these are, are uh, planning sheets. Uh, your conversations, neo celebrations, art forms, worship, short courses, uh, pedagogy outline, uh, and decor and administration. 
And you'll notice that when you get down to uh, the pedagogy outline, uh, that the page numbers uh, get a little bit out of whack. Uh, you can begin at that point uh, and uh, go through and re-title uh, uh, those page numbers. Uh, they are stapled in the correct order uh, in your uh, uh, packet. Please. Are the uh, lectures missing? They'll be added to you uh, 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 later on. Thank you. Any other questions in general about this? Uh, the specifics we'll go over uh, at the proper time. Okay, any general questions about the weekend then? But not, uh, let's, uh, after our closing ride break and return a half hour here for the first lecture uh, in Rio. lecture and then you are to serve as a springboard as an introduction uh, to the paper that follows directly. Now when you think of the context uh, I think you have to think of getting out a picture of the large area that you're dealing with. Lecture number one must remember is not on God, not in any way whatsoever. When our course was ordered in a little different fashion, we had more time for it. We had a lecture uh, on, uh, on God. This is not a lecture on God. It's a lecture on the question of God, or fundamentally, it's to get clear the salvation question. Without which clarity, nobody ever in seriousness raised the question of God, uh, or no one ever dealt seriously with God. We are out to help the people in that lecture get a broad picture of exactly where you have to be standing when the question of God is seriously raised or when you are going to seriously deal with that fairness you point to with the verbal sign God. That's all we're out to do. So that you're out to give them the broad, just the broad picture in which to operate. And as doing it, we've often said that you were out to not them a trail through this horrible uh, jungle, which finally is life itself, in order to see how that this is uh, crucial to understand. A third thing in terms of the context is that you're out indirectly to help them understand that this has to do with their life, that you are really building a super context in which they can grasp themselves. And lastly, to help them understand, so to speak, where they are in it. Are they here? Are they here? Are they here? Are they here? But all of this by indirection. But that's what I mean when I say that the lecture is out to give a, a context. <coughs> and then secondly, it's out to uh, raise uh, the life issues. And uh, this is an aspect of context to be sure, but it's to uh, try to help them see what the human issues are, what the human questions are. And indirectly, help them grasp that it has to do inseparably with the externalities of life and the internalities of life. <coughs> One of the insights that <coughs> built uh, this lecture came out of uh, the Jacob story. And out of that story, a formulation something like this was formed. When the external situation becomes crisis, disclosing the interior crisis within a person, forcing one to ask the question of life, and issuing in a radical revolution, there is God. Now, they've got to grasp this, and this is fantastically difficult, and I'll speak more of it in a moment. Well, it's not very important. 
Uh, all it was saying is that in the Jacob story, there was an external going on this that threw Jacob the, into interior crisis that drove him up against having to make a decision of who he was, which he viewed in a radical transformation. And it's a, of course, a fantastic story. And if you, in my opinion, if you want to know where you ought to go to get uh, some depth in this lecture, I would recommend that you take that story to pieces, piece by piece. For when you do, you'll find that really the whole God lecture, uh, the question of God lecture, comes out of that great, great Jacob story. Uh, and then uh, for them to understand, and this is in direction also, that, uh, that the universal and the particular cannot be separated. That the universal and the particular here cannot be separated. That your broad picture here about life finally is their concrete situation in every life situation. For instance, you'll be dealing in this lecture with a broad sweep of Western civilization, how it's come to an end, and how upon those ashes a new world is coming into being. And while you're doing that, you're talking about the most intimate, minute detail of their own existence. And the two fit hand in hand, <coughs> such as this. Now the third thing in, in the lecture is to engage lives. Sometimes we use many different figures. I always like the one to hook them, to hook them, to hook them. And this cannot be separated from what I've said but you're out to get a hold of everyone in there exactly where they live. Now this is difficult because, because they are trained to only look out. In our culture today, you're trained to look out. The scientific, the false scientific method or the scientific method before it was refined pointed in this kind of a direction and we glorified the so-called objective and external. And theologizing up to this moment has conditioned them to, to simply look out here, where you finally have propositional statements that you can talk about, sit down and have a comment and disagree uh, about. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes people in the, in the group, uh, uh, when you're teaching, some say, I disagree with you. Now I never know what to say, because hey, we have anything to disagree about. Uh, and, and, well, this is right, exactly. Uh, it, but as long as you're oriented out here toward an external body of belief, yeah, hell, then you've got to talk and uh, disagree. After you finish, it, it doesn't do any good. I mean, you, it's a waste of time. Uh, but if that's your orientation, you have to do it. This is difficult to enable one to, to begin to look down in themselves or uh, to understand that life, living, is not a matter of ideas about living. This is extremely difficult uh, to, uh, to accomplish. And then you have to enable them to know what they already know. Now this is why when they say, I don't agree with you, that you're shocked, hey, because hell are they to disagree about what you've done for them. Hey, it's disclosed that they know it, hey, their own interior life. If they're going to be disagreement, they're going to be uh, disagreeing with themselves. See. For what you're not presenting up here in this lecture is any external philosophy or theology about which people can agree or disagree. And if that's what you're doing, you're not giving this lecture. You're dealing with Perry's inner life. See. And when you finish, he hasn't got you on his hands. He may have you on his back. But what he's got on his hands is his own life if you've given the lecture. And that's why you don't give one good damn what his life is. He, you're out to deliver it he, into his own hands. And of course, this is extremely difficult to do. And then thirdly, what I mean uh, by engaging their lives is that you have to begin to sense, first of all, the illusions of the total group. That's the only way you can begin. You uh, have to know uh, as quickly as you can something about them in the group. For instance, if they come out of the Bible Belt, you need to sense that right away. If you're going to get a hold of their illusions and not your own, or the ones you uh, imagine you have or pretend that uh, you uh, that you have, uh, you work with a group, and then you work as quickly as you can with certain individuals, in it. and you can spot one or two rather quickly as to where their problems uh, uh, exist, and that begins 
to, it's almost a chain effect, as I experience it, uh, to begin to uh, get you then a, an actual feel after the individuals within the group. I didn't get that said very well, but your first sensitivity is, is what in the hell do you have on your hands as a body out here? You don't know, you don't see anybody at first. You just see this mass out here. And then you begin, and it always, at least for me, begins with an individual. Here, and here, and here, or here, or here. And when you spot one of them where they are, I sense that you begin to, begin to get a chain reaction until as you move uh, toward, uh, and I'll show you in, the lecture, in this first lecture, when you move down to the end of what I call part one, where you're dealing with how they're going to deal with the problem of contingency or identity, you ought to begin to get a feel after who you're, who, who you're working with. And one way that you begin to sense it by the time you get down here as to whether or not uh, uh, these are naive people where you have to push or whether they're lucid as hell and therefore you skip on to the next place where you're going to drill and uh, drill with a kind, uh, with a kind of, uh, of death. And then uh, uh, another way in which hooking takes place, and for me it's sort of like a backward twist, uh, and you have to work with this, is that you don't simply hook a person when you take, say, a hammer, and I want to come back to that. No, you've got a hammer. I mean, you've got to have your knife on his gizzard. But you also have to communicate to him that this is the human situation or that every other ass around here is in his trap or you haven't really got a hold of this man. I, I, I wonder if I got that clear. And including yourself, uh, there are, uh, we used to speak of this a great deal, there are techniques in which a teacher uh, uh, oper operates when he's dealing in this area. One is he keeps everybody at an arm's length. Everybody at an arm's length. And if he knows what he's doing, very frequently he's going, and, and perhaps in almost every lecture, he's going to get the people to laugh at him as a cripple. Uh, for instance, when you start out uh, a lecture, my wife is the wrath of God. Mark, Mark, you, you're making yourself the villain there. And you've got to be sure, this is an aside. I have uh, heard that some of ours use our spouse in a way that's derogatory, in which they come out the villain and you come out the hero. If that ever happens, cut it then. Never again, never again. You've got to work it out so that you're the SOB and it's no matter how you uh, approach it. But you have to allow them to laugh at you. You have to even sometimes directly uh, not go into a kind of a confession. I do not mean expose yourself uh, to them as the crummy, corny character uh, that uh, before the Lord you know damn well you are as, as a teacher. But if you do not keep the distance, you cannot do that. If you get mixed up with uh, uh, trying to get people to like you here, you cannot uh, make use of yourself in that kind of a fashion. Now the last one, it is an introduction uh, to the papers. And some of this will come out even a little bit clearer, at least for me, uh, later. This lecture, that we give must always have the element of review. You know, the first one has very little to do there, but it reviews forward. It ought to uh, project the whole course, uh, so to speak. And in this, it serves the papers. It reviews uh, uh, backwards, uh, 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 certainly. Uh, and then, uh, uh, what I mean primarily, however, in relation to the paper, this has to point these people very clearly to the paper. That's why the God Lecture ought to uh, end up with some kind of a statement. Uh, like, uh, the question of God is only raised when one is thrown to the edge of their own existence. <coughs> I don't mean you actually use those words, see? But it, it, it has to intellectually show them. But it also has to mood-wise show them. I'm rather persuaded myself that uh, the tremendous, if wherever you get a tremendous fight against the Bultmann paper in these days, it's probably because that lecture did not really create the climate, see, uh, intellectual and emotional, uh, 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 that would enable these people uh, to go into that paper. And I'll talk more uh, about uh, that in a little bit. Now, let's talk a little bit of the form of, uh, of the lecture. 
And the first thing that I think ought to bear in mind, that our lectures are dramaturgical or dramatic. And I think uh, that you can understand uh, that whenever you're dealing with the kind of thing that I pointed to here and here, then you understand that you cannot give a, a lecture a la Aristotelian logic in which you move from one point to the next to the other. The, what you have to do is put on a show. And here, these are one of the reasons why you ought to read the Bible and particularly the Old Testament. The, for your Hebrews knew how to communicate dramaturgically, as I suspect no other people that ever walked the face of the earth. That's why you never have one ounce of logical consistency uh, 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 to be found in any part of the Bible whatsoever. It's just uh, one histronic uh, uh, gesture uh, after uh, another because it's dealing with life and not ideas about life, and life is always dramatic, it's never logical. Now, it seems to me we've got to be damn clear about that. That's why, in many ways, uh, uh, you have a group of characters here that stand on their head, and they tell me Judy Fischel climbed up on the table. <laughs> in her condition. Uh, uh, not long ago. Uh, 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 that's why the histronics uh, are in it. Now, mark you, there's some of us that are overly histronic, but uh, uh, it, it has to be uh, uh, dramatic or this is the existential or the salvational quality uh, within uh, uh, the uh, lecture uh, as, a, as a whole. Uh, and when you think of building this kind of a lecture, then you have to think in sort of in terms of a chart, I think. Uh, I was just sitting up, up at my desk a little while, up Lynn's desk a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one of these damn things. And I, there's a lecture. There is one of our lectures. <coughs> there is one of our lectures. That's what a lecture is in the way that, uh, that we give it. I've Trade always thought of it sort of like this. In this lecture, there's, you only have one thing to say. Just one thing to say. It's like a good play. A good play does not have many things to say. It has one thing to say. It's like a parable. There are not many lessons in a parable. If it's a good parable, there's one and only one. You just have one thing to say. And that I represent it with that. And then I have to think in terms of coming and saying it this way, and then coming and saying it this way, and coming and saying it this way, and coming and saying it this way. Or that even that doesn't get out it quite deep. It's almost as if you want to sneak up on this side of it and wham, that one thing you have to say. And then you slip down and come up and bang it back <coughs> that way. Uh, but in each one of these is a dramatic construct uh, within itself. Uh, before we're through with the weekend, I want to put it some some charts up here of the lecture. But I almost hate to do it, eh? uh, because then that's not the lecture anymore. Eh? The lecture is what I'm doing up here now, so to speak. And I haven't said anything except one thing ever since I started. It's this kind of a thing. And you, you cannot lose that. Eh? Uh, 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 or you've lost what these kinds of, of lectures uh, uh, actually are. And then you have to deal with the inner movement with it, and you have to get the drama in relationship to these parts. Now, if you understand our art form com method, uh, conversation method, then you'll understand that our lectures are but nothing but a form of our movie conversations and our conversations on Guernica and the philosophy that is behind uh, those uh, kind of conversations. In which, <coughs> when the lecture is given, it's seen as a whole, and I have to think backwards as the man who's giving it rather than one who's hearing it to get a hold of. But it's a whole, and then it's made up of parts, each one of which is a very dramatic entity in itself. But it's not saying anything but this, and another dramatic construct. And yet these have movement, and I'll come back to talk more about the movement in a moment. These are related to one another. So your picture is is here's your whole with the parts all related to the whole and all related to each other part. This is the kind of an artistic construct that you're attempting to, uh, 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 to build in these kind of lectures. And then I think it's important that, uh, that you understand <coughs> that therefore uh, you leave them hanging. 
<laughs> Golly! When we uh, uh, first started uh, years ago, when the church, uh, you think it's dead now. You ought to have really known it 20 years ago or more or more. Uh, 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 when it just wouldn't be. They had the universe wrapped up in external ideas and that's the way it was. Just period. And when you blasted away at that, uh, many of the criticisms we got is that at the end of our lectures or courses, we let people hanging <laughs> and, didn't, and didn't give them a new world to live in. And you even get a little of that mud now, but it doesn't come as blast, just little old trickles uh, come out because there are not many of these characters, praise God, uh, that uh, are left. But, and, but the one thing they, of course, they could not understand that no, no play is a good play that finally wraps up an issue. What it, what it does is to stick a life issue into your gut, see. Uh, those of you, you've got problems on what the hell was saying, being said in, in, the, in, 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 in that heavyweight play we do. What is that? What's the name of it? Requiem for a heavyweight. Uh, in a, in a, in a, it doesn't finally tell you the answer to life. So they, we used to use an illustration about the Gospel of Mark that there isn't any conclusion to it. It's as if the man wrote the thing and then threw it in the lap of the reader with the words, now you've got a decision to make. Uh, and a good play that lays out the a crucial area of existence. But finally, it leaves that guy out in the audience with his guts on his hands, see, about which he has to make a decision. And very obviously, uh, that our lectures are evangelistic, but not in some damn narrowistic uh, uh, 19th century sense, but in the human sense, see, that whenever you deal with human lives, you're out, see, seriously, authentically, you're out uh, to bring about a kind of a decision. And every one of our lectures have got to leave them hanging, that is, confront them see, with a decision about their own lives. And I think that this is simply uh, a crucial part uh, of this. Uh, the next thing in this is actually building the model. And we'll have some experiences of this, but uh, with this, but I want to give you an abstraction a little bit here anyway. Uh, we have a little way in which when we have to go out and give a series of lectures at, we call it on the circuit, uh, which has uh, been just more than valuable. We make a grid like this. I used to always do it on the airplane as I was going along. And uh, however many uh, squares you have in it, you begin to put in these squares what you know. And sometimes it's, it's an illustration. It's sometimes what I call a sequence. And by that, I mean uh, something that you've got a hold of that, that if you start uh, with A, you can go on 15 paragraphs so you never miss a beat. Uh, uh, you understand what that is? Uh, what that kind of a thing is? Sometimes it's a whole lecture. Sometimes it's a <coughs> lecturette uh, that, you ha uh, that you have. Sometimes it's a strange kind of an outline. Now, you, you know somewhat the, the general area. Until you fill all of these up, <coughs> fill all of these up, uh, I uh, usually put one in these that when it's going to be dealing with a certain area, I just write Sartre, which uh, means here that I've got a way to wrap Sartre up and put him in my back pocket in a, in a lecturette that can just come off, you know, just like this, and can be pulled in anywhere and used it. As a matter of fact, those of you who have been working our minute curriculum uh, understand that this is exactly the same kind of a procedure. Now, this is in a certain area. Now, you've been asked to talk upon, say, three or four subjects. And you begin to pull out of here, out of here, out of here, uh, out of here, until you get your construct, something like that. And then you pull out of here, and you pull out of here, and you pull out of here, and you pull out of here until you build yourself construct. And mind you, that was never in history before. And in principle, this can be a great art piece. This is why the lectures we give, I can never call lectures, and they aren't sermons. There is somewhere in between, and I've always liked Kierkegaard's category, edifying discourses. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, one of the tragedies of these 
uh, and this is why hell they can never get them on tape. Uh, one of the tragedies of these, if you paint a picture, you know, it sticks around for 50, 100, or 1,000 years. And you create one of these art forms, see, they're gone. Do you understand that? They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They have to be built again. But this is a part see, of the dramatic arts, uh, of, of course. See. Uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, uh, uh, in written form, it stays on. But uh, the Hamlet, see, uh, that Joseph Jefferson played, see, it was there one night to change the world, and then it was gone forever and forever and forever and forever and forever. I had not thought of it before, but there's certain blast of contingency in mm -hmm. this that is both frightening and wonderful uh, uh, at, uh, at the same time. And mark you, that we'll come back to this, even though very frequently words are the same, day after day, week after weekend, in which you do it. But if you do one of these lectures, each time you give one, it's a new edifying discourse that is gone forever and forever and forever. And it's hard, I think, for us uh, perhaps to, uh, to remember that. And then uh, <coughs> the way I like to think of the lectures being formed, and we work here instead of the abstract number five, when we're dealing with the practical, or the abstract number three, when we're dealing with the theoretical, with the abstract number four we use when we're dealing with the dramaturgical. Some of you people who like two and numbers are going to work on that uh, a little bit. Now, in principle, you could decide that you're going to have ten. Uh, but I like to think of the lectures, and they vary a bit here, but the basic construct is there, of having four segments for episodic snatches, and then I like to think of these as working in four different areas, uh, and then I like to think of each one of these areas being divided up like that with, and I hate to use this word, uh, but with an illustration. But I do not mean by an illustration a story. Hell, there are a million and one illustrations, uh, uh, like, like, uh, the 20th century will be remembered by two symbols. One is the dropping of the atom bomb, and the other is the rising of Sputnik. That's what I mean by an, il uh, by an illustration. And I don't know what, what term to use. Or it could be, uh, it could be a bright hot ball of fire. <coughs> Just those words is what I mean by, uh, 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 in this context, by an illustration. If you can think of a better word, uh, I, I would like to have it. But in, in this part here, and in this, and in this, I like to be able to have my fingers around four. Now, there's a problem here. Some people, once they've come up with something fine, can't leave it alone. That is to say, you damn well don't give everything you've got up on this chart unless you're an insecure teacher. Then you feel that you've got to give it. Uh, no, in each, each edifying discourse, this is why if you go into lecture without brooding, unless the circumstances demand that you're just a fool, uh, that's all, and you're on the downgrade uh, as, uh, as a teacher. You can just bet you're on the downgrade of a teacher. You've got to have brooding time, and that brooding time is reformulating your art form. This is why I feel it's so crucial that if you haven't been in a group and you're coming in as a visiting lecture, that you get as much information out of your colleagues as possible as to who in the hell those people are, what's happened up to, to this time, what needs to be done, what was done <coughs> wrong before, and out of that stuff, you uh, create your edifying uh, uh, discourse. But you've got the stuff here. And what I meant by, you know, a little while ago telling you how sometimes uh, that the group of us around here build lectures out. I mean that same kind of thing, <coughs> that here in the area of the question of God, you have yourself a body of material, in this case, rather highly organized, but when you pull this off into the, this is not your art form, your art form is what you do up there, that edifying discourse that you build and then goes out of history. And uh, <coughs> therefore, this kind of a model, it seems to me, is crucial. And those of you, or not on top of any lecture, you're not on top of it because you haven't done this. You do this, and I tell you, you're going to sweat like hell to get those boxes filled up through there. But you do it, you, yes, Robert? That's your palace. Hang on. 
that's pretty good. I hadn't thought of that. And by the way, any of you break in because I, I'm not going anywhere in particular. Uh, that's a good figure here uh, 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 to use. These four would they uh, correspond, for instance, to the uh, four uh, sections of the God Lecture chart? 